How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in today's video we're going to be covering something you need to be looking into if you own an Intel CPU. Whether it's in your current system, another system you might have access to, or a friend's system, forward this on to them. In this video we're going to be covering undervolting Intel CPUs. This is incredibly simple, quick and easy to do and more importantly 100% reversible. We're not going to be playing around with any BIOS settings with inside of this video, we're going to be doing this all within Intel's official software for this so you can quickly and easily try this out, see what results are available on your PC and if you don't like them, turn it off instantly or keep it running in the future if you do see fantastic results. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Undervolting your Intel CPU is extremely useful and very easy to do. It will allow us to lower the overall voltage being drawn from the CPU at its stock settings, whilst keeping stock performance, or in some cases, even increasing performance. Regardless of what Intel CPU you are using, whether it's brand new, incredibly high end, or something on the lower end skew of Intel's chips, will lower the amount of power being drawn from the system and CPU, saving money on power bills, and is a win-win-win scenario. There is literally no downside to undervolting, and if you're not doing this, you aren't getting the most out of the CPU in which you are using. We're going to be making this as simple and as quickly to apply as possible, and it's 100% reversible. Jumping straight into the guide, we first of all need to obtain the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. You can do this through intel.com's download section, or via the link in the description below, or a quick Google search. Scroll down to download XTU setup.exe, save that, open the XTU setup install, yes. If you do run into any issues whilst running XTU, this could be for a few reasons. Reason number one may be due to you having core isolation enabled on your system. In some cases, you may have to turn this off. You can turn it back on quickly and easily if this still doesn't work afterwards. To check this, go to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type core space isolation. Click on the core isolation setting, navigate down to memory integrity, and switch this to the off position. You might have to restart your device, go back to core isolation after the device is reset, and make sure that memory integrity is switched off. Run the Intel XTU setup again and see if that fixes your issue. Another issue that could be causing this is if undervolt protection has been enabled on your system's BIOS. This isn't available on all BIOSes. Have a look around, you don't have to play around with any settings. If you do manage to find this on your system, try disabling this. Other reasons Intel XTU may not install to your PC may be due to you running this on an unsupported platform. Now your CPU might still be supported by Intel XTU and there is a workaround to get an older version or a current version of XTU installed by bypassing this check with inside of the installer. We won't be covering that in this video, but it does exist around. You can Google around for this and try this out yourself at your own risk, but it is out there. Lastly, if this doesn't install, it may just mean that it's not supported on your system. This will not work on every Intel-based CPU, and that's completely fine because there are other methods in which we can utilize to limit the power of processors in other ways on practically all CPUs, and there will be a guide coming to the channel soon, so make sure that you are subscribed for that if you do happen to be on a system where this isn't supported. When undervolting Intel CPUs, especially more modern Intel CPUs, I would recommend avoiding updating your BIOS if it's not 100% necessary. Unless you're waiting for any BIOS fixes, features that are quite buggy and you're looking for a BIOS update to come out that potentially fix those, if your PC is currently working perfectly fine and there is no need to update your BIOS, I would avoid doing so as on some CPUs it's been reported that undervolting actually no longer works. You won't cause any damage by applying an undervolt to a CPU that no longer works with undervolting, the settings just simply won't be applied and the stock settings will override them, running the stock settings regardless of what you set. By all means, if you're looking for BIOS fixes, updates or features aren't currently working and you're looking for a more stable BIOS, that is way more important than undervolting your system. So in those cases, make sure that you do update your BIOS. All of the necessary features and fixes you're looking for is way more important than applying a system undervolt. Once the program opens up, you can navigate down to the advanced view to see other options, but we're just going to be focusing on the compact view in this video. And the only option we're actually going to be using is the core voltage offset. The only other thing you need to make sure you can do to see if you're able to adjust the core voltage offset. You'll then get an overclocking disclaimer, select agree to that. We're not going to adjust it to anything. Just make sure that you can see if this slide does actually move and if it does great that means that your cpu is supported and we can then begin undervolting with intel xtu set up and ready to use on your pc we then need to obtain two other pieces of software to ensure that we get the best results possible first thing we're going to be obtaining is cinebench r23 we can use this to make sure that we're getting real world gains from this undervolt and it's also great to put a load on the cpu to see how the cpu behaves whilst being undervolted and we're lastly going to be utilizing hardware info 64 this application will be able to show us the watts being drawn from the cpu the voltage being used our temperature 
temperatures and our core clocks and everything you need to know whilst undervolting. Do a quick Google search for Cinebench R23. You can use any of your favorite sources. Scroll down to Cinebench R23 for Windows. Select download. We're going to head to hwinfo.com slash download. Scroll down to either the installer or portable versions of Hardware Info 64. Select free download. Click on any of the hubs. Scroll down to the desired version of Hardware Info you would like. I'm going to be going with the beta. Once it finishes downloading, double click on the folder. Grab Hardware Info 64 and put this on your desktop. Find the Cinebench folder once it finishes downloading. Right click and select Extract All. Get rid of the zipped Cinebench folder. What we're first going to do is open Hardware Info 64. Navigate over and check Sensors Only, then Start. You'll then see a ton of readouts. We don't have to take note of most of them. We're simply looking for the readouts titled CPU. Anything else you can minimize by clicking the arrow next to this. Underneath this, we're looking for where it says Core Clocks. Click on the drop down menu for this, so you should then be able to see all of the core clocks for your CPU cores. We're then also going to scroll down, minimizing any other unnecessary information until we find CPU package, and this is the temperature readout we'll be using. We're then also going to look for CPU package power, which will show you how many watts the CPU is drawing. And last but not least, you're looking for core VIDs. This is the amount of voltage the CPU is using. At the top, we have current, minimum, maximum, and average values. So as you can see for me currently, the CPU is using 1.19 volts. The lowest the voltage has been since hardware info has been opened is 1.153 volts. The highest it's been is 1.295, and the average is 1.228. Throughout this process, we're going to be keeping an eye on these four values. We're then going to open Cinebench and get a base result. Select Accept, head to the top left hand side to File, Advanced Benchmark, then navigate down to Minimum Test Duration and make sure this is set to Off. Slightly minimize Cinebench so you can open Hardware Info 64 in the background. What we're then going to do is run a quick CPU multi-core test. Select Start on this. The most important value we're going to be looking at whilst this test runs is our core VID current voltage, which is 1.165 volt for me. Your CPU could be completely different, so don't be alarmed if your number is much lower or much higher. We can then also look down at our CPU current package power, which is 118 watts. And we're getting about 60 degrees on the CPU package. We've scored 16,927 points. With our first run done, what we can then do is minimize Cinebench. We can then begin undervolting. Navigate to your core voltage offset, and we're going to be taking this to the left-hand side until we see the minus setting. For nearly all CPUs, this should work. We're going to start off by setting minus 0.50 volts. We're then going to the bottom to apply. Now remember at any time, if you want to set any of these settings back to stock, just click the revert button, then select apply, and everything will be back to normal. What we're then going to do with that applied, open Cinebench once again, start the test again. This time on the top left hand side, take a look at your voltage, it should be using less voltage. If you remember for me, I was utilizing 1.165 volts before, we're now utilizing about 1.125 volts. So that's about a 50 millivolt drop, we've dropped about 10 watts, and roughly 3 to 4 degrees. We'll keep the Cinebench test running until it completes, where you'll then be given a final score. In most scenarios, your final score is more than likely now higher than it was before. And that's fantastic, we've successfully undervolted. But we're not going to stop there, we're going to maximize the gains for all of our CPUs. Head back to XTU. Further decrease our core voltage offset by either 10 or 25 at a time. So for example, you could go down to 0.60, select apply, we'll then jump back to Cinebench, run the same test. Make sure that your voltage has dropped by looking at the core VID voltage compared to what it was before. If it has dropped, fantastic. If it completes the Cinebench run, that's great. We can go down by another 10 or 25 millivolts, this time to 0.70. You'll go down, apply this setting, run Cinebench, and we'll continue this process either until we see a massive drop in our Cinebench score or our system crashes. If the system crashes, that's completely fine. You haven't damaged anything, it's a normal result because we've dropped the voltage too much and that's to be expected. The system will then reboot. If you are given any messages from the BIOS, just select Load Optimize Defaults. The system will reboot back into Windows as normal. If you're having difficulty utilizing Intel XT, you to achieve your undervolt, or you would like to just skip out using the software altogether and just use the BIOS to do this, simply boot into your motherboard's BIOS by restarting the system and spamming the delete key on your keyboard. If you're brought into any sort of easy or basic mode, see if there is an advanced mode available. For me, that can be found on the right-hand side. Head over to your CPU or tweaker options. Depending on the make and model of your motherboard, your motherboard BIOS could look slightly different to mine, but the options should be there. You'll just need to go around and look for the options, and they should be named very similarly. You may need to go into CPU settings or CPU vaulted submenus to find the settings in which we using. Thankfully on this motherboard, all I need to do is scroll down to CPU vCore, sometimes known as CPU voltage. Before changing any of the modes with inside of here, it's worth taking a quick picture with your phone or just noting down the numbers or what the settings are currently set to. So for any reason you want to turn this off in the BIOS, it's quicker and easier just to set the options back to what they were, so you don't have to worry about adjusting any other BIOS settings or resetting your BIOS completely. We first of all need to navigate down to the CPU vCore voltage mode. If you have an option for offset voltage, set that, otherwise use adaptive. 
For me, I only have adaptive. Set the VF offset mode to legacy if this option is there for you. If it's not, that's fine. I can then navigate down to internal CPU V core offset. Just like we would do with the Intel XTU software, we would start by taking away voltage, so we'll input negative or minus 0.050 to undervolt the CPU by 50 millivolts. What we'll then do is input that value by pressing enter. Go to the top right hand side to save and exit, boot into your system, run Cinebench with hardware info 64 running in the background, and make sure that your voltage is lower than it was last time. All you then need to do is follow the rest of the steps in this video, which are showcased using XTU, but instead of using XTU to change your voltage, you'll boot into the BIOS and repeat this step with your lower voltages until eventually you're met with a crash, where you'll come inside of here and then put your previous stable voltage in, just like you would if you were utilizing XTU. On my CPU, I'm able to go to minus 0.140 volts until it starts crashing. So what I would then do is add back 10 millivolts. So I would go to 0.130. I would then select apply, run Cinebench once again to double check that it is actually stable and it wasn't a fluke. If it's not and it crashes, again, then all you need to do is add back an additional 10 millivolts to the voltage in which you previously tried. If you remember back to earlier on, my CPU was utilizing about 1.165 volts throughout this test. If you take a look up at my hardware info currently, I'm only utilizing 1.053 volts. Our CPU package power has dropped down to 92 watts, and the CPU package itself is sitting at about 50 degrees. Remember, your numbers will be completely different, your CPU could be using a lot less voltage or a lot more, so I've now just retested Cinebench using negative 0.125 it's 10 millivolts over my last crash point, and I've successfully finished the Cinebench run. I've got a final score. The final score is fine. So this could now be stable. What we're then going to do at this point is leave this applied, minimize XTU. We then need to do some real world testing on our system to ensure that this is in fact stable. So boot into any of your favorite games, re-render some projects you might have saved in your PC if you do any video editing, and use your PC how you usually would. A couple of great games for this would be Warzone 2.0 or Apex Legends, as they are incredibly sensitive to any CPU adjustments. If you're not sure what load to put on your system, you could utilize a program such as OCCT or other CPU stress testing software of your choice. Alternatively, if you just want to utilize Cinebench, you can navigate to the top left hand side to file, select advanced benchmark, go to minimum duration, and you can set this up to half an hour. If it passes the half an hour test, that's fantastic. If you're able to play your favorite games without any issues, that's also great. If you run into any crashes or instability, even if it's just program crashes that you aren't used to that have only come up since you've undervolted, well, all you need to do is head back inside of XTU and just add an additional 10 volts to your undervolt. If my crashing stops and that fixes my issues and I'm able to play my games in a real world test scenario and use Cinebench and it completes no issues, fantastic, we've then been able to find our stable max undervolt for our CPU. But bear in mind stress testing isn't everything. Because we are applying a negative voltage offset, this means that our voltage will still fluctuate at idle and under load on Windows. We aren't running a static voltage at all times. So one other avenue you do need to test in your system is that your system is completely stable at the desktop, not running anything at idle. So close out of all the programs in your system, don't have anything running, set it to your desktop how you usually would have it, do some light web browsing and use it very lightly. If you are still stable and you don't have any crashes, fantastic, you've now successfully found your maximum undervolt for your CPU. If you do notice any slowdowns, sluggishness or crashes at the desktop or doing extremely light loads of work such as web browsing, all you need to do, open up XTU, add plus 10 millivolts, apply and continue this process until all of those issues are gone. Once you have found your successful undervolt in which you are happy with, take note of the numbers even if it's just a notepad on your desktop. As for results for my system, on screen now you'll be seeing a ton of benchmarks from productivity to different games. If you have applied this for your system and you've been able to see decent results, let me know in that comment section what voltage you were able to get down to, the CPU you were using, and the benefits you've been able to achieve with CPU undervolting. If content like this does interest you and you're looking to get more gains out of your system, consider checking out the two videos on screen now and I will see you over there.